but okay, seven o'clock will call to order the meeting of the zoning board of review uh, for Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Uh, roll call, please. Robert Nigerian here, Scott Martin here, Paul Pascarello here, Michael Amafatano here. Vinny Marcantonio. He's here. Um, yeah, he's online. Remote. Yep. Gail Denomi. Here. And Christopher Dezeal. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item two is disclosure of no compensation or pension credits received by board members. So, as we always note, uh, all members are appointed by the town council and uh, serve uh, voluntarily. Item four is disclosure and notice. The zoning board of review members shall disclose any ex parte communications about any contested or material adjudicatory fact or opinions concerning the merits of any application for the zoning board of review. And uh, again, we have not disclosed such communications. Uh, item four approval of the minutes. Uh, from the January 25th meeting. Uh, they did go out this afternoon, but I believe they, 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 weren't, they weren't elaborate. Uh, the only corrections I did note, Jen, is on the first two items, excuse me, it said Mr. Martin made disclosure, so technically that should be me. So okay, I'll fix it. We, we don't need to, uh, we can just amend it uh, and approve it as amended, but for the record, just change that to either my name or Mr. Chairman, whatever it is you want to use. Okay. Uh, are there any other corrections or additions? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion to accept? I'll make that motion. Mr. Pastorello, a second. Mr. Martin, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Yeah, Okay, um, item, item five is, a, is an omission or an error. Um, the Del Vicario decision was already approved. It was supposed to be a design official sent all of you an email indicating that there was a mistake made. Uh, it, the agenda was supposed to be the approval of the RTM Realty decision. But of course, since the agenda was posted, uh, change it will we'll just indicate that it's an error. So, as uh, Carrie Anderson had noted to all of you, uh, we might as well take a moment to resolve that. Uh, he indicated by email that uh, he wanted to go with 222. I'm out of town that, that week. I asked him if we could continue it. Uh, he said the hall doesn't. This call is available on 3 1. Um, can everybody make 3 1? He also noted in his email to us that the governor's order expires on 3 4. Uh, all that would mean is that we'd have back to back meetings, which is unheard of. I mean, normally we, we do every other, but we could still keep 3 8 uh, for a dimensional variance that we know nothing about yet. So the real question now is if we can agree on three one. That's my reviews, Julie. Other members? I'm good. Okay. Uh, Vinny, are you okay for March 1st? Anything, Carl? I have muted. I'm just trying to unmute him. Okay. We have the majority anyway, so. Okay, so uh, Carrie is listening. So we, is everybody okay with 3 1 and 3 8? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 3 8 may be difficult to me. I'm not sure yet, though. Okay. Um, Just want to give everybody a heads up because we're discussing it. 3 8 meeting is a dimensional variance. So I assume what we could do is we could have the elections on 3 1. Everything we were he was proposing to do on 22 would be on 3 1. 3 8 would be a dimensional variance. 
uh, when will you know well, that's a regularly scheduled meeting, right? So I'll send an email to so them up to confirm it. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully, um, well, we'll I'll deal with it with Carrie. It's a regularly scheduled meeting, so we probably should still book it. So it'd just be more important to know whether or not you'll be able to join us. Uh, Carrie, are you there? Yeah. Right, hold on. He's dialing in too. Okay. But we don't have to wait. I guess we can continue. All we're going to tell him is that uh, he's on now. Okay, right. Carrie, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, we the board was all in agreement that uh, we can move two twenty two to three one. Oh, and okay. So we will we will have an appropriate quorum. Correct. Yeah, all members were okay. in agreement. Now That's three eight okay. is that a regularly scheduled meeting. On our calendar, three eight is a regularly scheduled meeting, and I'm working with a an applicant on a dimensional variance. Okay, and then we noted the email you sent. So the only member that may not be available is Paul Pasquarello, but because it's a regularly scheduled meeting, if the applicant is available, we should book it. And Paul will get back to you shortly in a day or two to confirm whether he'll be available. Okay, sounds good. Oh, that's right. And the other thing we have to do, Carl, maybe is, uh, uh, Carrie, if we don't hear from Vinny, we'll try to get, Vinny's going to have to open up his mic at some point to vote. So we'll confirm Vinny for 3-8 as well. We have a quorum for 3-1, but we'll confirm Vinny for 3-8. If neither of them can make it, then, you know, we'll have to adjust, but we'll still have five. So either way, we, we should go with 3-8, but we'll, we'll wait to hear from Vinny as well. But both dates seem to be fine at this point. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that's the Mr. Chairman, is the stenographer with us? Uh, online. Okay, good. Okay, we'll go to item six, which is the continuance of the application of Wayne Oil, 59 School Street, uh, to build an attached garage <laughs> dwelling at 59 School Street. Uh, I'm looking to teach relief from section 4.4 for non conforming structures, letter subletter A, and 5.5.1 residential district dimensional regulations, site area setbacks, and RU district. So we had, uh, we had been almost complete this application. Um, we had asked uh, the applicant, um, Mr. Doyle and uh, Hoyle, and he was gracious enough to uh, accommodate us. He put the two stakes at the 14 foot mark, which hopefully allowed members as they drove by the house to you know, get a better feel for what the magnitude of the change would be. Um, and I think, I believe we left, uh, we hadn't gone into deliberation, I believe we left still open the applicant's uh, ability to present. And I think we, I don't know if we did or didn't close, I think we closed the public comment, but uh, is, uh, ma'am, are you here to speak? Okay. Um, so we, we, there would be no members of the public here. Uh, um, Carl, correct me, but uh, those in attendance via Zoom are can't can participate. They can only observe. No, they can participate. Oh, they, can. they can, but there's uh, there's nobody from the public. It's, oh, it's okay. everybody who has uh, business with the board. All right, so we're back to that condition where public can can engage on Zoom, but we have no. Okay, uh, so what we can do is, do we need to refresh any members' memories on what we looked at? Um, uh, we still do have for, uh, it open for the applicant. Uh, I'll leave it open uh, for a few moments if members have any questions based on uh, whether they did or didn't drive by and we had any questions for the applicant. 
And Mr. Malcolm is, uh, is excluded, not recused, but he wasn't in attendance at the first meeting, so he, he won't be able to vote. Um, all right, does anyone have specific questions for the applicant? Okay. Um, sir, do you have anything you'd like to add to what you gave us before? Okay, so that being said, we'll close. Uh, uh, the, the ask part of the meeting that deals with the applicant's uh, I'll presentation. I'll make a motion. To okay, second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now we will, you know, we'll go into deliberation. Um, as I noted to, as I noted to you, the, um, um, when we look at all of what we have to do, um, essentially covered by 9.3 in the zoning ordinance book that lists the subcategories that we must substantiate when our, our decision must be based on uh, answering those questions in, in, a, in, a, in a direct way. So I, I still kind of am where I am um, with regard to what I saw. Uh, the 14 foot stakes were helpful and we have blizzard shortly thereafter, but they were still visible, so you can see them today as well. Um, I did what uh, uh, Chris Neal did when he mentioned that, you know, this is the second time I drove around the cul de sac of Hallowell or the, the loop of Hallowell. And really, it appeared to me that all of the homes were fairly typical in size, uh, they all had single garages. Some a little bit bigger than others, both the garage and the house, but all of the all of the properties were similar in that regard. I saw no two-car garage uh, building. So what I'll do is what I usually do. I'll go through the points. Uh, I'll I'll read what my thoughts are, and then members can add to that accordingly. So 9.3.1a. Uh, that the hardship for which the applicant seeks relief is due to the unique characteristics of the subject land and both the subject land or structure, and not to the general characteristics of the surrounding area, and is not due to a physical or economic disability of the applicant. Um, and as we know, because of because of the 4.4 criteria, um, this is a non-conforming structure. Uh, as to the dimensional setback, you can see on the plot plan that I believe it's in violation as a precondition, pre existing condition in two locations. And, and it, what further magnifies it is that the requested relief is in the same direction as the current non conformity. So it magnifies uh, directly what 4.4 speaks to, which is that the, the zoning ordinance does not wish uh, to magnify or increase the size of the line conformity. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any physical or economic disability of the applicant. The applicant, however, has identified that their hardship is just the desire for additional garage space. Um, and, and, and I did reference the Rhode Island voting handbook, which indicated that in and of itself, uh, that's that's not truly a hardship. The desire for additional parking on an existing house lot is not a hardship. It's a desire, and it, and it may be justified, but in the eyes of the zoning book, the, the zoning rules and regulations, it's, it's not truly a hardship. Um, and it also notes that, you know, as we know here, not to the general characteristics of the surrounding area. I just noted that when I go around, it appears to me that the subject land is uh, is not unique to the subject uh, surrounding characteristics of the surrounding area. Meaning, if that lot, if every other lot was a two-family or or a, a very large single family with multiple garages, and then you have this one. And you could say, well, that, that is very unique, but it's not unique in that everything else around it is fairly typical in that regard. So the subject land doesn't appear to be any different from the other properties in the immediate area. Uh, any comments by membership in that regard? Uh, 
Yes, Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Um, I, I kind of, you know, I hate to take an opposite opinion, but the hardship, I believe the hardship is caused by the fact that this applicant didn't build this house. And it, it was built in a way that was pleasing to, to planning because if it was built in the, in the sideline uh, that should have been, it would have, it would have looked awkward on that corner. And then if I, I could be wrong on this, Kerry, you could correct me, but when this house was constructed, the side setback was only 15 feet. Is that true? Uh, I, I think he, he and Terry had found the cost, but I, I don't know that that's relevant because the the, the zoning is what it is. Yeah, but I, I did create it because if you, just by definition of what you're saying for hardship, if you use that definition, then as I noted in the first meeting, every property in this town, every other town that predated the zoning map would be considered a hardship because there are non-conforming properties in every community and, and every, uh, virtually every state that has zoning. That's true. Because the That's overlay true. created it. So it is not any reflection on the previous owner, the current owner, uh, or any future owner. It's just a reflection on the fact that that property doesn't comply with the, the setback. No, I understand that, but it's true that that hardship was not created by this applicant. The, you know, the, the, old, the zoning was created after this house was built, so therefore that creates the hardship. And even Chase in, in the zoning manual allows us discretion just on that fact alone. Yeah, but again, I think the issue is hardship is not a function of the non conformity because the relief that's being requested goes way beyond, you know, if, if you could argue, Paul, and what I I was trying to argue that way. If the relief that was requested was on the opposite side and it was away from the non-conformity, you know, it would be a more compelling argument to say, oh, okay, but if the relief is granted, you have less than four feet on the side yard. So you took a non-conformity and you magnified it. It was more or less against it. Specifically indicated that that, and of course, yes, the very nature of applying for a variance allows this board to grant whatever relief it wants. So it just becomes a discretionary decision on each member of you. Your point is your point, dude. But I don't believe it's the definition of a hardship because it's an existing condition. And it's and it and it is, we don't we can't say with certainty that any other property in that cul-de-sac isn't also not conforming. We, we can't hold it against the applicant and we can't hold it in favor of the applicant because we don't know. And that's not relevant because that information isn't in front of us. So, any other comments or additions to that 9.3.18? The only additional point that I would make uh, to your point, your point, Mr. Chairman, is that the driveway is configured in such a way that the existing garage uh, can be utilized. Uh, uh, unimpeded, and he can still park an additional vehicle. He just wants a vehicle parked in stock. No, that's a good point because you can see the paved area in the back, right? Yeah. Any other members with questions? Okay, we'll move on to again, I'll go to item B, so 9.3.1B. That the hardship is not the result of any prior action of the applicant and does not revoke primarily from the desire of the applicant to realize greater financial gain. Uh, my notes are that and I think all members would agree that, that both are true. This is not, and your point exactly, Mr. Pasquarello, that clearly uh, there's no prior action by the applicant, and we all know that it's his house, and therefore there's really no issue of financial gain. It's not like it's a second uh, home or a second meeting. Of, an income property for an additional rental here. Item uh, 9.3.1 C. That granting the that the granting of the requested variance will not alter the general character of the surrounding area or impair the intent or purpose of the zoning ordinance or the comprehensive plan upon which this ordinance is based. Uh, 
uh, my notes from previously and then what I drove by today just to start the discussion is that uh, we all know that the address has frontage on Main Street, which is you know one of the major roads in the town. Uh, different than Iron Line and some of the other uh, addresses where again I indicated there is no such thing as precedent. But as I noted as an example, when we granted similar type relief on Iron Line, I believe it was, uh, all of the land between the two properties, the two existing homes was, was hilly and completely forested. So no one would be able to ascertain or guess where the property line was, where the setback line was. So that made that a little bit uh, more appealing as to the ability of the board to acquiesce and, and grant the relief. In this instance, we have level land, clear, unobstructed from the, the abutter to the right. And, and I would note that there was some discussion that, you know, I think we all realize that it's really not relevant whether the house is occupied, unoccupied for 10 years, one day, because it's the person that would live there whenever. Uh, but, so it's not really relevant that we can say because the house is unoccupied that therefore it would be less uh, truth of truth intrusive if we granted it. Uh, increasing the length of the structure towards the abutter will certainly alter the general character of the surrounding area. I don't know that I saw too many houses where it looked like you had any infringement or encroachment. Uh, and we know that the ordinance calls for a side yard setback of 20. It's already in violation in, in the back corner. Um, uh, and we know that in order for the applicant to build what he, he, he believes he needs, uh, we, we, we're, left at, we're left with less than five feet in, in the back corner. Um, and again, as I noted, even though this board, yes, always has the right to, to do as it sees fit, the ordinance clearly indicates that it prefers that we not expand on a non conformity. Um, so that's, those are the starting points. So members, we, uh, to add to that. Don't expand a non conforming So is that? Don't expand a non conforming law. It's it, it just, uh, it, it, you, well, yeah, it's yeah, just background noise. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, anything else on, on, on that subsection? Okay. Uh, Mr. D, which is 9.3.1D, that the relief to be granted is the least relief necessary. Uh, we, we did indicate. Um, that clearly the 14 feet in width appears to be the least relief when you when you figure a nine foot wide garage door uh, and the ability to open both doors, you know, 14 feet gets chewed up pretty quick. Uh, we do know that, you know, when we're talking this for a while and just by looking at it, that the existing end wall, the gable end wall, is a little bearing, obviously, because it's the it's picking up the end of the house. So we can't just he, he could, working with the building official, he could put a structural header and, and make it uh, so that you could access directly into there for more than just the passenger. Uh, the 25 feet, you know, was in question. You know, the 24 feet, I'm sorry, which is what's shown on the plot plan, had been a question uh, of mine at the time. Uh, we didn't really uh, address that too much. Um, I have, uh, we did close the app, uh, uh, applicant's communication, uh, but we could reopen it if need be. But you know, the 24 foot depth um, might mitigate if it was reduced. Um, um, and, and you know, the other thing that, you know, when you think about it, if you measure the width of the house, the total length of the house is about 56 feet based on the scale. The only thing I would say about that, Mr. Chairman, and that's because I know that my garage is 24 feet deep. It's, it's not as deep as you think. I have the SUV and I can barely put my garbage can behind my SUV in my car. So with a pickup truck, that would seem reasonable. Right. But 
Sorry. And I was I was leaning in that direction, but we wanted to get some feedback. So you know, so we do feel that it is the least really necessary based on the 14 and the size of the vehicle that would be proposed to park there. Anything else on subsection D? Okay, moving on to subsection E. That granting the variance requested will not confer on on the applicant onto the applicant any special privilege that is denied by this ordinance to other land structures or buildings in the same district. Um, you know, we we have to deal with this subsection on every variance, and of course, clearly, with virtually every variance, by definition, we are granting a special privilege. So we always have to weigh well, what does that truly mean. Um, and, and my only talking point is that the granting of a dimensional variance of, you know, almost more than 75% of the required setback, we went from 20 to 5, and just less than 5, uh, would confer uh, on the applicant a special privilege that is denied to other land structures or buildings in the same district. Because again, when we drive around that immediate cul de sac of Hollowell, uh, you know, we, Hollowell Street, we look and we see that, or I looked and I saw that uh, there's general conformity as to size, as to size of garage, as to size of block, as to size of structure. So, uh, again, I'll open that up to the members. Any comments? I do. I only have one. I have one. You're actually talking about how well drive oh. and right across. Right across. Oh. Of how well there are non conforming lots. And if you look at those houses when you drive by, they're brand new. I'm not going to say brand new, but they're a new. Additions. Um, I don't know how it would be for Harry, but there are additional varieties on I mean. well, 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 it. I'm just referring to. I know it says drive, but the plan said street, so I saw street and I said street. So you mean that they're on Hollowell Drive or I on have, School Street? I'm going to say School Street, but it is on the corner of Hollowell Drive and School Street. He does have a non-conforming lot, and he also has an attached garage. So how can you say yes to this man and then kind of like go, oh, well, you know, he doesn't look good around now. Well, drive. Well, there are some sheds on Hallowell Drive that are bigger than <laughs> that I can put my Jeep in. So you're going from a, a, a attached garage, which is fine, but then when you look at other not performing locks around there, they haven't attached the locks. Yeah, the only thing I can say is that we don't know what we don't know. I know. We, we don't know. But then when we're looking around, we have to see what we're looking at. Yeah, but we can't make the statement that we can tell by looking at a lock that is not conforming. We, we don't have that authority. We really don't. I mean, you, you, can, you can use it as your opinion and your basis to make a decision, but we, we can't say. It appears that uh, four of the five abutting properties are not conforming because we don't have that legal, we don't have that information, and, and it's not relevant because, I mean, it is in some respects because yeah. everything is wide open as to general character. So you can argue it both ways. Your point is is taken right. uh, in that regard because yeah, it's a fairly tight clustered cul-de-sac or loop, whatever you want to refer to it as, and it's a it's a I mean, frankly, for me, what makes this difficult for me is that the front end is on School Street. And then, even though we have no authority of architecturally, um, I, 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 I also have an issue of architecturally with what that structure would look like. If this was on Hallowell uh, Drive, uh, it, it, you know, members may have a different, uh, but my, my gut concern is that. It's a but it's frontage on a main road. Uh, and it would be very clear that this was you, you can see the fence clearly is intended to define the property line. And if you 
if, if you build the garage, you're going to clearly see that it's, it's architecturally it's going to be out of balance. Uh, almost more than a half or a third of the house is going to be garage versus residence. So, you know, that's why this one I think is so difficult for all members. So, the point is well taken in that regard, but we also have to be careful what we base our decision on. We can't assume what we don't know to be true, even though we may believe it to be that way. You, each individual can vote that way. So, as usual, you know, we can. So, anything else on that? On that sub grant category, the uh, uh, subsection E, which is hearing them go to 9.3.2, which really isn't applicable. This applies to a use variance. I don't need to read it because we kind of don't vary. We're not, uh, Mr. White is not applying for a use variance, so therefore it's, it's not relevant. Uh, 9.3.2B is the last criteria. Uh, in granting a dimensional variance, the hardship. That will be suffered by the owner of the subject property if the conventional variance is granted shall amount to more than a mere inconvenience, which shall mean that there is no other reasonable alternative to enjoy a legally permitted beneficial use of one's property. The fact that use may be more profitable or that a structure may be more may be valuable after the relief is granted shall not be grounds for relief. Um, uh, I mean, I think this one really is quite clear. Uh, and as I noted, um, you know, the Rhode Island Zoning Handbook, which is a public document, they have every right to use as research, and you know, that's why it was written, very really clearly indicates that the Superior Court has found that uh, the need for additional parking or a garage, it specifically says that. Is not considered, does not rise above the threshold of mere inconvenience. So, in the court's eyes on previous cases, they, they indicate that the need for an additional garage is a mere inconvenience, not more than it is. And the other thing that's quite clear, and again, we deal with this every time, so you can look at it both ways, but it's quite clear that there is a reasonable alternative. It's a house that's been occupied since it was built, and it will be occupied whether the relief is granted or not. So it's clearly established that there is, quote, a, a reasonable alternative to enjoy a legally permitted beneficial use of the property. So, you know, we, when I look at all of the pluses and minuses, you know, that's, that, that's the last one. Any comments on subsection B? Okay, then uh, I mean we can have general discussion if members have uh, things that they want to say prior to going to the vote. I mean, if you want to want to just speak freely and summarize your opinions, uh, I mean, that's now's the opportunity to do it. I just would like to do that. Well, I'd like to say what I I'd like to you know just enforce my belief is that this house was built before zoning came out. Um, Mr. Hoyle has been in the town for a very long time, you know, well-respected taxpayer. Um, I think it does speak volumes that no one is in opposition to this, which is not only, we don't always give that the sole um, passing or, or not passing a, a uh, application, but that does get weight, it has to get something. So, you know, that being said, I, I'd like to make a motion my motion would be to approve this. Well, we're not entertaining a motion just yet. We'll, we'll put a motion out there like we always do. This was just for general comments. If members wanted to summarize their thoughts. Uh, anyone else? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just have a pro and a con. And the pro mm -hmm. is, is if you look at this application and you compare it to the I-1 building application that we did grant, there is one similarity that does help the applicant, which is that the uh, premises that's adjacent on School Street is set back further back from the, uh, uh, the street than this house. So there is some uh, 
a decent amount of distance between the back corner of that proposed garage and not the property line, but the, the adjacent structure. Uh, the con, I guess, would be is I think that you would have to see that it's totally unimpeded with direct sight. There's no trees or shrubbery whatsoever. You would ask for some type of uh, uh, hedging um, uh, up to the garage so it's blocked by the, the, the adjacent owner. But looking at that from the street, I'm just wondering if that would be thought of. Okay, uh, well, thank you. Uh, uh, Gail, do you have anything? Okay, anyone else? Um, okay, well, uh, I guess you could elaborate a little bit on your, your, uh, uh everybody, if you will, uh, thought whether or not that would make it more palatable, but you know. Uh, where do you stop with everybody to go all the way back to the shed? Or, uh, you know, um, you know. So, so, Chairman, in my opinion, if you add the upper body, you're really going to cause that non conforming lot. You know, those upper bodies are going to grow right into the garage. It's only four feet, and you can't put them on the lot. No. Be, yeah, yeah. Uh, and even if you put a low head of some sort, it needs to be maintained. And, Four feet, you can barely get a one lower, you know, back there between it. So, okay, I mean, you know, my summarization is that it, this is more difficult than um, that I would like it to be because I, I think the board is always trying to. I hope you can appreciate, Mr. Oil, that we're trying to be as fair as we can. Uh, sometimes applicants come and, and so it's a very self-serving argument and they want what they want and they can't seem to grasp that you know we are supposed to be representative of everyone uh, and there is no precedent from any any lawyer will tell you that you can't use precedent because each event is a different thing if we use precedent then there will be wouldn't need to sit here about it. anyone else you know, we just do our back and say well we granted that one so we should do this one um i think it just comes down to uh, 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 decisions by the members as to which direction, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm still leaning towards the majority of the criteria is to the negative. And, and what magnifies it to me is that we're expanding in the direction of the non conformity to you know less than five feet from the property line on a main road with a primary exposure. With an architecturally challenging design because you've got a great extension where the roof extends, you see it in the picture, and you're going to have to interact with that, and then you're going to have to change the roof slope. And even though architectural uh, decisions are not relevant to us, it plays into we have so many subjective, open ended areas where we can drift left and drift right. Almost anything is open to reasonable discourse. And I think reasonable discourse also includes the architectural integrity. Uh, Mr. Well may or may not have the financial wherewithal to put what would look nice, and, and there would be nobody that could tell him that he couldn't do it, but yet it would impact the visual on the street. So, you know, this is going to be a difficult one. Um, so I guess at this point we can bring it to a vote. Uh, just to confirm, uh, uh, Carl, it's a uh, four. Is needed for uh, four, four out of five. Yes. Four out of five. Um, uh, Mr. Maldonado, you can, if you want to. Then again, the resolutions or the motions are always made in the, in the affirmative, and then we either vote in favor of or against. I uh, move to approve the application by Wayne Foyle of 59 School Street, West Fitzgerald, Rhode Island, to build a patch of house in a single family dwelling. 59 School Street, or Smithfield. The applicant seeks relief from Section 4.4 non conforming structures, letter A and 5.5.1 residential district dimensional regulations, side yard setbacks, or ignore in the district. Oh, you're seeing on top of that, which would be the majority of the old one. 
So I guess that would be useful. Mm -hmm. I move to approve application number ZBR 221 by Wayne Coyle of 59 School Street, North Smithfield, Rhode Island, to build an attached garage to the single family dwelling at 59 School Street, North Smithfield, Rhode Island. The applicant is seeking relief from section 4.4 of the zoning ordinance titled non conforming structures, letter A, and 5.5.1 residential district dimensional recognition side yard setback for an RD district. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just one second. Hold on. Just one second. Heather, are you hearing that okay? I need to know who made the second, please. Yeah, we were trying to dis differentiate that. Hold on one moment. Who wants it, Mr. Marker or Mr. Dezeal? We'll give it to Mr. Dezeal with the second. Uh, one, one point of order. Uh, it should be a voting member that seconds. So I'll second. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had my mistake. So Mr. Martin will second that strike. That's my mistake. All right, we'll have a roll call vote again. Hi, uh, Robert Nigerian. No. Scott Martin? No. Paul Pascarello? Yes. Um, Vinnie Marcantonio? Just trying to get him to unmute. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, we're going to say it now. I didn't hear that. Did that vote come through? Uh, he, he's unmuted. He can uh, vote. Uh, Vinny, can you vote on the, on the motion, please? Vote on the motion. What was that? Is, is that a yes or a no? Say what? yes or no. What's the motion? But if you approve it. Oh. The motion is to approve it. Vinny, is it a yes or no? I would approve it with stipulations. Well, it's too late for the stipulations. We have to vote on the motion. I'd say no. So therefore, it would be a no. Okay. Dan, you can continue. Um, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, okay, never mind. Uh, I, assume, I assume another motion can be made with stipulations after this motion. Okay, yeah, we'll return to it. Okay. Why don't we finish the vote on this motion? Gail Denomi? Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's five. Uh, what about the Mr. Zeal? No, it was five, though, right? No, my, uh, Mr. Malpatano has to recuse himself or go there. Or, he's not eligible to vote. So, how many <clears throat> members were present? So, we have one, two, three. Or Chris is the alternate. Chris is the alternate. Okay. All right. So what's the tally? That would be five. No. What's the total vote? Uh, yay and nay. Oh. Um. Four no's, one yes. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's incorrect. It should be three and two. Uh, Gail Denomi and Mr. Pat and Paul Pasquarello voted in favor, and the other three members voted against. Uh, did you concur with that, everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's three to two. So that would mean that the motion fixed. Uh, two in favor, uh, gee, yes, that's correct. Two in favor and three against. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, Mr. Iguales, you the solicitor, are you, are you indicating that if Mr. Mark Antonio wanted to make a second motion, he could? Yeah, anybody, if, if there's no motion, motion that passed, anybody can make any additional motions they want uh, as part of the trend. And so the uh, Mr. Mark Antonio has indicated that he would make a motion or support a motion in favor with stipulations. Certainly the board can consider that. Yes, of course. So, Vinny, are you there? Can you? Clarify and indicate what your um, conditions would be. And if we can get a second, then we would be happy to uh, vote on a second motion. Tell them the stipulations. Hmm? Tell them. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman? 
Go ahead. I have a question before I, I can't hear that well where I'm at. But the neighbors next door, were they against it or for it? Uh, we've had nobody other than one of butter, Mr. Bader, Stephen Bader. He was here at the previous meeting and he lives to the rear of the property and he was in favor. There's nobody yes. present tonight. Yeah. Okay. If, if they were in favor, I own property in an IU district in town, and a lot of properties are very, very, very close uh, to five foot, 10 foot. You know, there's no reason they couldn't move that garage or they could make it uh, go up a little bit with it. If you wanna stay within the five foot range or they could make it shorter, 22 feet. So they have the five foot range uh, off the property line, there's many, many properties in IU throughout town, especially in Union Village that are just five feet off the properties. And, um, you know, I just wanted you to know that. Yeah, but what would your, if you wanted to make a condition to a motion, a new motion, what would you say you would be, it, seemed, it appeared that you said you'd be in favor if under certain conditions. And what were those conditions? I didn't know that. Hmm? Let's see what the conditions would be. Well, I would make it, I would make it 22 feet. So I'd be more, I'd be at, at least five feet off that property. Or I would move the whole thing up a little bit. So it would even be more than five feet off the property. Mr. Chairman, um, do you understand uh, if, he's, if you look at the map, what Mr. Mark Antonio is speaking to, I don't mean to interrupt, but I, I'm i looking at the map and I think I understand what he's talking about. I don't know if yeah, the board no. does. Yeah. You can see that the, at its nearest point at the rear, it's 4.81 feet uh, remaining for the property line. Um, right. But this, if you... goes the, this goes to the discussion that I entertained at the beginning, which was the depth of 24 feet, you know, um, whether that was whether that was a, a mandatory or a, you know whether that could be changed, um, I imagine in fairness the only way that if board members wanted to entertain this, uh, Mr. Solicitor, if you give us the direction if we needed to, we could reopen discussion with the applicant to ask him if he would even be willing to accept the 22 foot long garage. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think the board should at least consider that possibility. There is one other, I think Mr. Marcantonio, I was listening to Mr. Marcantonio and looking at the map. Now, I was not here for the first meeting, and I'm not sure if the proposed garage is separate from the existing garage or it's part of it, but let's assume it's separate. I think Mr. Marcantonio is saying if you push the whole garage towards the street. Well, to clarify, on the plot plan, the front of the building is at 32.86 feet. The front setback is 25. The so if you say you have- The proposed garage is attached to the building and is a continuation of the front elevation. Um, I, I understand, I, but I, Mr. Marcantoni has given two choices. He's saying either reduce the garage by two feet in the back to 22, or you could slide the garage up and still be respectful of the 25 feet. And I don't want to speak for Mr. Marcantoni, but I'm looking at the map when he said it. And yeah, I think he said the moving forward and the strip transit, right? No, either or. Yeah. Either or. And if the applicant okay. is willing to entertain one of those two, or you oh, said- no, I understand that. I just wish this had been brought up during, <clears throat> Uh, during our discussion and we could have engaged him in that regard so uh we'll, we'll do whatever you're here to tell us what's the legal uh the proper legal thing to do if we want to uh, given that the initial motion was in the negative um and if we uh if members do want to revisit and converse with the applicant. Uh, could you please give us direction? Do we need to take a second motion to reopen? Yeah, well, you could do one of two things. 
you can make a motion to I would make I would have someone in the in the affirmative make a motion to reconsider. Yep, no, I understand. I just want to make sure and make, and, that, and if that gets made by someone in the affirmative, anyone can second it. And if that passes and that only needs a majority vote, yep. then we could entertain the discussion. Okay, well, why don't we take a moment? Um, uh, you know, the, as I stressed all along, our intent here is to try to always do what we believe is right. So if either of the two members who voted in the affirmative would like to make a motion to reconsider, uh, please go ahead and do so. No, no, it has to be the people who vote, voted, who in, who won the motion. When oh, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. And they voted in the negative then because the, the motion is right. the affirmative. Yeah. So uh, any of the three members, that makes, yeah, I'm sorry, any of the three members who voted in the negative against the motion uh, can, if they so desire, can make a motion now to reconsider. Uh, either of the, the other two members willing to do that? Uh, Vinny voted, well, Vinny would have to say that. Uh, can you move Vinny to reconsider? Can you move to reconsider? Yeah, I'll move to reconsider. Okay, so Mr. Mark Antonio had voted against the decision initially. He moves to reconsider. Any member can second? I'll second it. So we have that. Why don't we have a, we, we just need a majority vote? Yeah, or just hold. a majority vote. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, so now we're going to reconsider, and I'm assuming, Mr. Uh, uh, for the solicitor, obviously we need to reopen uh, 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 the applicant's uh, comments so he can converse with us freely. Do you agree? I, I would agree. Give the okay. applicant a chance to weigh in. Okay, so before we do that, Mr. Hoyle, why don't we just no, but, but hold on. Let's just flesh this out as to what it is so that we don't go around six times with the applicant. Uh, we're going to open it up and you'll, you'll have freedom to talk and we'll engage you. But I think what we should do is take just a moment to look at the site plan in consideration with uh, what uh, Mr. Mark Antonio was indicating. You know, we have architectural implications. I don't think we have a front setback situation because we've got 25 feet. Of and we've got 32 existing. Uh, so the question would be, you know, from a, the whole issue here, the whole issue here is the nonconformity isn't going away. The whole issue here is uh, what is pal palatable for members uh, if we change the 4.81. So that really should be what we're focusing on. And there's only two means by which we can change the 4.81. And that's the distance that's currently remaining between the closest point of the proposed garage and the property line. That would be either to reduce the total length from 24 to some other number, or to, and or in addition to push the structure proposed garage closer to the street, which would put the front elevation of the garage at a different plane than the existing house. So is that a concise, uh, analysis of what we would consider. Okay, Mr. Martin, I'd like to make a motion to reopen uh, the uh, applicant's uh, presentation. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, I'd like to add something to that. If I understood Vinny correctly, he's looking for a five foot minimal. So whatever it means of getting the five foot, either by shrinking the building or sliding it forward to achieve a five minimal five foot um, instead of a 4.81. Well, that wasn't a motion. He just indicated he put that number out there. It would be, it would then require a motion to be made, whether it's five foot or five foot six or, or whatever. So what we should do next is just, we should just discuss with the applicant what he is willing to accept. So why don't we just go ahead and let Mr. Martin make the motion. We'll make a motion to open up the applicant section. So real, oh, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we'll reopen. Um, and Mr. Hoyle, if you'd like to come forward and remember, the stenographer is uh, remote, so you just have to raise your right hand and look towards the screen and follow her. We're swearing in this witness, sir. 
Yes, yes, please. Okay, sir, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I'm Thank you, sir. Could you please state your full name for the record? Wayne Bruce Hoyle. I'm sorry, sir. Right into the microphone. I, I just, didn't just speak right into the microphone. It's very funny. Wayne Hoyle. Yeah, I got that. Wayne, Wayne Hoyle. Are we good? I assume we are. Okay. Uh, so you've heard the, the conversations back and forth. What do you, what can you accept? I think it will look kind of strange if it bumped out two feet. That was my concern, yes. What, what vehicle are you, you said you had mentioned your pickup truck. I mean, what, what options do you have? How many vehicles? Obviously, you have more than one. Yes. So, well, what what do you park in the existing garage? Uh, my wife's uh, Grab Four. Okay, and that's a smaller vehicle than the pickup truck, correct? And will your pickup truck fit in the existing garage? I never tried. I never tried. <laughs> I'm afraid to. So, if I get you right, so what is the front to back dimension of your? Truck with 22 feet work, or you're not in a position to answer that? It's a 2018 four door Silverado with a six and a half foot bed. I don't know how. Was it 18, 20 feet long? Yeah, but let me ask you how far back have you ever measured the back side of your garage is the entryway to the rear of the house? Right? No, it goes out to a porch. So is the full width of the full depth of the house the existing garage? No. Okay. There's so a, there's a porch area on the back. Okay. So you don't know what that dimension is, the inside dimension of your existing garage. No, because I was going to go the same length as the existing garage, and that would bring it right to the back of the porch. Where the just before the window? Right. You said you were going to, no. that window is part of, that window would go away. Yes. So you would stop at the fence that returns into the house, into the end wall of the house. That fence, I would end up, I would end the garage at that fence. Yeah. Which is the back part of the current garage today? Yes. I don't know that. Because you said well, well, is that where you came up with 24 feet? Yeah. Yes. Oh, all right. I understand. No. You good? Here you come. Okay. Are you going to need to speak into a mic though, so that the. Uh, uh, no. Back, back, down? Yeah. yeah. That garage will end right where this post is. Yeah. It's pointing to the fence post and the back of the wall. Right. But again, that's 24 feet to the best of your knowledge. So that doesn't uh, that doesn't alleviate the issue. Um, and you would rather not project towards School Street. I mean, I, I agree with your note architecturally. It may look a bit odd. Make the garage short. So I could, you know, I could, you know, what do I need? A couple feet. Well, we don't know what you need. All, all the member has done is indicate that the member felt that they would be willing to change their vote if the 4.81 was closer to five feet. Um, that, that's all we have. We we're not giving you any assurance of any kind. Just one member who voted against it indicated that if it was five feet or a little bit more than five feet, uh, he would be inclined to vote in favor. No, I, I, I could I could bump it up. So what, what that means, Mr. Hoyle, is that four, four point eight feet with five feet is he did throw up twenty two feet for overall length, but point two feet to make it five is like three inches. So you'd have to either shrink the building by three inches to make keep it a five foot off, you know, um, distance between your property line. Or you have to slide the building forward. How many other feet do you want? You could go seven feet with that current zoning situation. 
So you, because you have, you have 32 feet, you, you have to maintain 25 feet from the front setback. <clears throat> Can I ask you a question? Does the garage have to be attached? I mean, uh, we did discuss that your pavement, you know, extends. I, I don't know if you spoke with the zoning official, and I don't think you could, you could, I don't know if you could put an accessory building uh, and use it as a detached garage. I don't know if that would be worse or better or even weak. Because um, it's in the front, so I don't believe you can put it in the front. But you can't put it on the other side because you're well and it makes no sense right. on the other side. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, if, if it's going to be used as an accessory structure, Un, uh, detached, it would have to be at least 10 feet away from any principal structure or other additional accessory structure on the property. And what about the front yard setback? I forget what's an accessory structure for front yard. No, it, it, uh, any accessory structure has to be in the side or rear yard. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So it's really not viable in this regard. It doesn't offer us a solution. Well, I think, uh, you know, maybe what we should do uh, um, is have some general discussion. You can stay up there if you'd like, and you can say whichever one you'd like. Um, uh, let's have some general discussion as to what the, you know, whether 4.81 or 5 foot or 5 foot or 2 or 5 foot 3, you know, does any of that matter? You know, Mr. Mark Antonio has stated from his years of experience that it's his opinion that there are multiple locations where you know you have five feet. I don't know where that number comes from, but that's what his assertion was or is. Um, so what are members' opinions? Does, does five feet or five feet plus make any difference to those who voted against? That's what it comes down to. It's also so the, 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 what this really comes down to is I mean, we, we certainly can do it again, but, but the discussion really should be on that back corner. And uh, no, what's wrong with 22? We, we, we can grant whatever we want to the applicant as to. He could push the building forward of his own accord. He doesn't need our approval because of the design season. You know, uh, he's still not conforming. So even pushing it forward, uh, the structure is still not conforming even when he pushes it forward, if he pushes it forward. But we could grant him the right to choose to push it forward. Uh, but I think you have to respect. If the landowner has indicated that he doesn't think his own house would look good with it forward, then it's kind of silly for the board to grant him that he doesn't want to do it. So it really comes down to whether or not we offer to give him the authority to do this with a number other than 4.81. Uh, that's, that's really, I don't see another way to look at this. Is that a fair statement? This is what this is all about. So. Members should indicate, you know, what are you thinking? Are you thinking about five point two feet? What do you think? Well, it's going so. Can you make three and a half? Would twenty three and a half feet make it? Um, wait, what's in, the, what's in the back of the other garage? It looks like you have a room. It's a screened-in porch. Yes. Okay, and that's behind that other. That's behind the garage. Thank you. Okay. Well, Vinny, did you have anything to add? Can it go to 23 and a half? At what point would it be the five feet? Just a few feet. Well, we'll ask them. All right. What do you say? The button near the top? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, you uh, you got to give us the number. What okay. you were thinking of? Okay, I, I have trouble hearing you because there's an echo, 
Yeah. Okay. What did you say? What dimension are you thinking of when you when you indicated that you would be in favor? What dimension for that rear dimension? It currently is four point one eight feet. Well, I know we're through the past. So what we've, we've given would... we've 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 gone as we've gone a maximum of five feet off in an I an IU district and. Uh, People always cooperated to get that at least minimum. And it, it, I, I understand that he's got a truck. I understand he's got a truck that's more than uh, 22 feet. And, uh, but uh, I'm just saying he can move it forward. He could make it 23. As long as, uh, in my mind, as long as he stays with something we've been doing for years in the IU district, we wouldn't go below uh, five foot. Well, the only thing that I think we need to know for the record, and again, members can do whatever it is they choose. There is no such rule. You know, we, we can't reference a rule that doesn't exist. There is no such rule that says we will allow you. He said there's no such rule. We have the setback, which is what it is. What the rule was, we, we had a rule amongst ourselves in, in zoning during a certain period of time, what we would accept as a as a percentage off the uh, side lots on IU districts. And I understand there's a lot that of them. That may have been your I'm, still, rule, I'm still using that. I'm still using that in my mind as to what I would do. And I, I if people want to go that. along with it, that's their prerogative. Yeah, I respect that, but that's not a, that's not a legal uh, matter for that this board can interpret. We can't say that our opinion is we can we can grant up to five feet because if we do that, that's just that may have been what you did, and I can understand it if you did it, but we certainly can't use that as a premise. If members want to say that five feet is acceptable, then they can say it. But I'm certainly not going to go on a record and say that our our unofficial attitude is that anything close to that, anything five feet or more is acceptable. But I understand what your point is. So it seems to me that many would be in favor of five feet plus. So it really comes down to what the other members want or don't want to do with regard to this matter. And, you know, what seems to be kind of silly here is it would seem to be silly. I would rather continue the meeting and have you go back and measure your truck and measure your garage and come back to us and say 22 feet, 22 foot six, what will work? as opposed to us saying to you, Mr. Royal, we will grant you 23. And then you sit down with your builder and your builder says, it, it won't work. And so all we did was make you feel good to frustrate you in, in three months. So what is the better here for you to go back, measure your truck, drive it into your existing garage, do whatever you want to do to come back to us. You already know that the majority vote was against what you have. I'm, I'm sure the solicitor will agree that if we, I'll let him tell me, but if we decided that we wanted to continue this again, we're not trying to frustrate you, we're trying to work. If you agree to then go back, do whatever math you want to do to determine what is the maximum depth of this garage. And, and the other thing I would ask you is, what's the maximum width? because that will impact you as well. I understand the width of the trick truck, but I also understand that if you were able to cut an opening with a lintel, you know, a, a beam, such that you could open the door on your vehicle when you pulled in on the driver's side, because that wall would not be there in its entirety, you could make an interior garage door, if you will, a framed opening, that would allow you to possibly reduce the 14 to 13. So if you reduce it to 13 and you pull it forward six to eight inches, you have nothing to lose by coming back to us and saying, this is the best I can do. Uh, you throw yourself on the mercy of the board and they either say, we've exhausted everything, we've, we've done the best we could, we either agree with you or we don't. I mean, to me, that appears to be the most reasonable approach. Would you be, if you speak to that, just so she can hear you, come forward with my please. Well, we 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you would be in agreement with that if, if we were, I'll check with the solicitor to make sure we're legal. I'm sure we are, but if you don't tell if we were to continue this to the next day available and you come back to us, you do however you want to do it, you come back to us and you confirm the 14 and the 24, and you change both of those dimensions to the least that will work. Whether it's by cutting an opening into your other garage, which I think you would want to do anyway. Yes. So that they would connect. So if you situated it where the door typically opens, then that may allow you to come to the left towards the house six to eight inches. Anything we pick up here is at least you showing your goodwill to try to work with us to say, I'm doing everything I can. And it, it may make it easier for us to jump over the hurdles that you, I think you respect there in front of us. We're trying to do what's right for every member of the community, not just you. So I understand that you would be willing to continue to a date certain, we'll agree on it tonight. So all we're doing now, we're complaining about four inches. Well, you can look at it that way, or you can look at it that we're trying to do everything we can to respect the law, which is that you're in violation of it already, and you're asking to be in violation even more. And our job is to pull back on the reins and say, uh, you know, work with us. So yeah, you can reduce it and say, this is silly, this is asinine. You're mm -hmm. giving me a hard time about eight inches in one direction and, and seven in the other. I can't change that if that's your thought. But if you look at it from a more productive and positive, you're trying to work with us because remember, you are asking for relief. You're asking us to grant you permission. So it's not unheard of that we have the right to look to you and say, you gotta work with us. What you're asking for is pretty significant. You know, the rule says 20 and you wanna take 15. By any reasonable standard, that's a significant amount that you're asking for. So all we're doing is saying, you go back and make sure that these two dimensions, if they can change, it's obvious to you that it would make it. I can't guarantee you anything. The three members who voted against it, myself included, I'm not going to tell you. Otherwise, I would come out and say, no, I'm not changing my mind. Don't waste your time. Uh, out of respect to you and membership, I'm giving you the opportunity. You can walk away now and say no, and the answer is you voted no. Uh, or you can say, okay, Mr. Inspector, Mr. Zoning official, let's book it to the next available meeting, and I will work with my builder or whomever and find out if you can reduce the two dimensions and come back to us with a with an updated plan prior to the meeting so we can absorb it, just like you did with those pictures. You can just mark this up with a pen and say, I'm going to change this to this and this to that. Send it to Mr. Anderson, he will get it to us. And there's no promises, but at least it's another effort to try to uh, appease us and to give you what you want. Okay, does that make sense? No. no. Mr. Chairman, if I may, if there is one alternative. We could put it to five feet, and it seems like Vinny would change his vote to yes, and then the yeses would have it. No, no it's, that would be three to three. To three. Uh, you've got three no and two yeses, so it would be three to two. I'm sorry. Yeah. You still need four votes for it to pass in either direction. So, and again, my point all along was it does us no good to give this man, this applicant relief if the relief is not viable. How did it pass in the first place if it was three to two? No, there's three, no, two in a favor. Two in a favor, three against. It was three against. It was two in favor, three against. No, five votes. But there's no question about what the vote was. There was three no's and two yeses. So there's no question about what the vote was. Mm -hmm. The issue here is you need four for a motion to pass. That's, I don't want to get into the, the, the rules of the rules. They're not changing. Uh, and the point is, well, the only point I made was, why are we going to say to him five feet if that's what we in fact did? And then he comes back and meets with his builder and he says, oh, thank you, but I can't do that. I would rather give him the opportunity to find out what he can do and come back to us and say either, no, sorry, you either grant me this or I so just I, do that. So I could go, actually, I could go 13, 6 instead of 14. If you tell us you can do that, then tell us you can I'll do that. that. Yeah, but that doesn't change the depth, so you need to look at both. I mean, if you can say what I... 
you know, I don't want to start to try to do the math here, but 13.6, of course, would, would add a foot to the 4.81. So that would become 5.81. And the only other thing that would help is if we can reduce the 24. So, if, you know, I still think it would be worth your time to come back. You're not going to, even if you were great with the relief, you're not going to start building it until no. April or May anyway, right? So you're going on record as saying you can go with 13.6 or 13. I can go with 13. 13.6. Well, why don't you check and, and see if 13 is available as well? And I, and then, no, I can go, no, I can go 23. But I don't think the truck will fit me. Well, that's why if, we don't want you to give, we don't want to give you the relief so you can be frustrated. And we'd rather you go back and find out what will work. What you need. And then if you say, oh, well, this is what I have to have, then we either say yes or no. But it will be over. There won't be a question of, well, you know, if you give me the six inches, I would have been able to do it. We're putting the burden on you to come back to us and say, if you grant me this relief, it will work. And then we can either say yay or nay. Is that fair? No. Okay. okay. So um, what we should then, uh, to the solicitor, Mr. Griazzi, can you just, at this point, because there is no motion on the floor, we can have a motion to continue, do you agree, to a date certain? I agree. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, I assume that the, the public hearing was closed at the end of last meeting, or was it open this meeting as well? I don't believe I ever closed it. Uh, you mean, uh, we, we closed the public hearing and we never reopened the meeting for the public to speak? Right, when did you close it? This meeting or last meeting? Oh, we continued, you mean, did we continue it from the first meeting? Right. Yes, it wasn't, a, this was a continuance from the first meeting. So okay. all we would do is continue it again. Exactly, continue it to a date certain for, you know, okay. you'll be fine. Yeah, and I, before we take a motion, Carrie, are you there? Just uh, for the zoning official, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, what what would work since we're going with three one? Three one was going to be what we, was going to just be elections and minutes and uh, approval of that decision, right? Three one was basically to uh, clean up a decision and get our house in order. Um, however, if you want to go to three eight, that is the reg regularly scheduled date for the zoning board meeting. But you, so we, but we have another dimensional variance, but this, the variance of the, this, this applicant here would be a pretty, very quick, a five or 10 minute circumstance. So you're suggesting that we move everything to 3-8? Yes, I, yeah, that is my suggestion, yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm so far, Yep. Yeah, but I, we can't, we can't, just because you're missing a statement, we can't. I have no problem if we want to keep it to 3-1. I mean, uh, and then still have a meeting on 3-8 if you want to give Mr. Pasquarello the opportunity if he's going to be out of town. But I, I have no issue with it. If we want to call a special meeting on 3-1, we have every right to do that. Do you agree, Ms. Figliozzi, that if we wanted to still have I, I a should... meeting on 3-1, we have every yes. right to call a special meeting? You could you could continue this meeting to any date certain, and my advice would be whenever the full board will be available. Because yeah, okay. So that's far down the road. I get you. So out of respect to Mr. Pasquarello, since he was very much engaged in this application, uh, if three one works for you, yes. So I would ask for a motion that we continue the application of Mr. Boyle to a date certain of three one. Uh, Mr. Anderson will fill in the agenda accordingly and we'll just make it work with whatever applications we need at that time. But this application would be continued to 3 1 if the member would like to make a motion. If you do, at least we should state in the motion that the applicant is going to revisit both dimensions, proposed dimensions, and come back with us to with the minimum that, that, uh, that he can live with so that it's understood. I think we all understand why we're doing this and what you're going to come back to us for. Okay. So if a member would like to make a motion to continue, please do. I make a motion to continue this hearing to 3 1. We have a second. I'll second. 
Well, we, we know that we're continuing application number uh, CBR 2201, uh, application of Wayne Doyle to a date circa 3 1 Well, we can indicate that uh, applicant is, is going to come back to the board with revised width and length dimensions for the proposed garage addition. Agreed? Oh, do we need to read it again? We're good. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Vinny, did you chime in on that one? I guess. Okay. Yes. You in favor? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, excuse me, who second that? Uh, who did we give the second to? Um, Gail and Obi. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that done, uh, we can have a motion to adjourn. Make motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we'll see you again uh, off the record on the record. Just get that to us a week ahead of time so members can thank you. For Thank you. I hope you appreciate you know, we're trying to do what we can. I thought I shut this off.